it is no secret that I watch a lot of reality TV. One might even say too much reality TV. But in any case, today I thought it would be a good idea to pay respects to the show that started it all. The show that defined a generation. The show that reinvented reality television by doing pretty much the same thing as those that came before, but this time with people that were kind of Italian-American. It's Jersey Shore. You, you see it there. It's getting bigger. That's what we're talking about. The idea was incredibly simple. A bunch of drunk people live together, and then they go to the clubs every night. Then they go back home and argue for five or six six hours because of stuff that happened at the club. Then they sleep the entire next day, go to the clubs again at night, and the cycle repeats again. Get drunk, go to the club, argue, sleep, repeat. It's, it's the, every day, it's the same thing. And this simple formula captivated millions of people, including myself. But what was so captivating about it? Is it really that entertaining to watch a bunch of people at a club? The answer is yes, it is. So anyway, today we're going to take a look at some of the best moments from the show, starting off with this classic moment here. So in the first season, the cast members had to work at a t-shirt shop, which was part of the deal of being on the show, but on this particular day, Angelina does not want to go into work because she claims she's sick, but also says because she's thinking about her boyfriend. So if you're ever looking to fake being sick to get out of work so you can think about your boyfriend, then pay attention. <coughs> I'm just like, you know what? And I'm thinking about my boyfriend so much, and I'm like, I really don't want to work today. I just don't want to do it. <coughs> I used to try to pull this all the time when I was in elementary school, and I think I was more convincing. Everyone knows a forced cough when they hear one. It's pretty obvious. Danny, Angelina didn't show. Nope. I'm tired. I don't feel good. Like, I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to explain myself. What time zone are you in? What? What time zone are you in? I don't feel good, though. That's why I waste Danny. Come on, man. You can't tell I'm sick. I'm speaking at a low volume. Obviously, that means I'm sick. Why else would I be speaking at a low volume? Sick people cannot speak at loud volumes. Everyone knows that. Wouldn't you think it was more logical to call me an hour ago? I don't feel good. Like, I, okay, but who's like, covering your shift? Honestly, like, I'm sick. When you're sick, like, honestly, like... That's a really good answer. Honestly, like, what are you even, like, supposed to do if you're sick? I don't even know. What do you, what, you call and tell the person? I never heard of such a thing. Honestly, like... Honestly, when I'm sick, you should just know that and, and call someone else to cover the shift. If anything, it's shame on you. You know that when I get sick, I have a hard time operating a phone. You're lucky I came in here two hours late to explain myself to you. I had a problem last night with, like, my boyfriend and stuff. All right, what was the first thing that Danny told you when he came? Your boyfriend, all that forget about it. Come on. Like, you're not right. getting, are you getting it? Like, I'm totally getting it. Are you getting it? I said I was sick at first, but now I'm telling you that it's because of some problem I had with my boyfriend last night, straight up admitting that I was lying the whole time. Why do you still argue with me? I don't have to do what I don't want to do. That's it. But it was common courtesy for me to even walk over there. I, there's nobody to cover for me. I'm sorry. And I, I don't really care. I don't care what he thinks about me. It always comes back to this. In every reality TV show, it's always, I, I don't care what they think about me. Well, you should care what he thinks about you because you're working for the guy. And that's the only reason you're allowed to even live here and be on the show. Common courtesy would be to call ahead of time, not saunter in two hours later. I'm sick. When you're sick, like, honestly, like... So unsurprisingly, after that whole situation, she ends up being the one who gets angry and storms out, saying she can't take this shit anymore. She also decides to throw in a few coughs on the way out, you know, to really sell the idea that she's sick. So now the owner of the place that they're all staying in shows up to ask Angelina what the deal is, you know, what's going on. Angelina? Where are you at? She's upstairs. Tell him to come to the bathroom if he wants to talk to me. Other than that, I'm not going to answer him. This is incredibly childish. Why is she acting like they somehow disrespected her and they owe her an apology or something? All you had to do was just call ahead of time and say that you were sick, and if it was the only time that that happened, they probably wouldn't even question it at all. And let's say you were actually sick. Why would you show up and start to cough all over everything? Why, it's that hard for you to walk downstairs? What happened to you today? Um... What the hell happened? I'm not gonna go inside a bathroom. Well, then I'm not but talking, sorry. I'm not 15 years old. All right, well, I'm not talking then. All right, well, I'm not talking. You crossed the line, buddy. You crossed the line when you asked why I didn't show up for work. That was uncalled for. So now I'm just gonna hide from you like a child in the bathroom of the house that you own. So you're leaving, you're packing your bags. Because for you to stay in this house, you have to work. So there you go. That's the story of how Angelina got kicked off the show for the first time. All right, now we need to get to the meat of the show, which is anything that happens at the club or as a result of going to the club. If you could make a graph, it would look something like this. These are all the reasons that they might argue or fight, and as you can see, club stuff has 28%, but the result of club stuff is at a whopping 63%. They can spend days talking about things that went down at the club. Sometimes they'll be at the club talking about something that happened at the club last time. You'd think that you could put something like cheating or relationships as a reason 
reason they'd fight, but if you pay attention, it's a lot more complicated than that. Cheating really isn't something any of them seem to have a huge problem with, as long as it's not with someone they perceive to be as ugly, or a grenade, as they call them. This is like the worst thing a person can be, according to them, and that's why it accounts for 8% of their arguments in fighting. And this leads us right into one of the most iconic moments of the show, the note. Now, anyone who has seen this show before probably knows what note I'm referring to, but I just want to give some quick background information for people who have not seen it before. Every reality TV show like this always has those two roommates where they're clearly attracted to each other, but they don't want to say they're a couple, but they also don't want to say they're not a couple. So what that means is they just argue the whole time. In the Miami season, Ronnie was going to the clubs and hooking up and then going home at night and crawling into Sam's bed and telling her that he loved her and he was all about her and all that. These two find out and instead of just letting it play out or telling her up front, they decide it's a good idea to write an anonymous note. Should we do it in pink font? <laughs> the first night at bed, when you left crying, Ron made out with two girls and put his head in between a cocktail waitress's yeah, writing an anonymous note, that's the way to go. I'm sure that's not going to cause any further drama or arguments. The funniest thing about this is that there's only four other people that could have possibly written the note, so it's really easy to single out the people who did it. I don't know, they must not have thought about what they were going to do once she sees the note. Also was grinding with multiple women. Multiple people in the house, no. Therefore, you should know the truth. So at first they say grinding with multiple women, but when it cuts back, you can see they've added in multiple fat women, as if that's somehow supposed to make it worse. I really don't understand what a person's body size has to do with the level of cheating that it is or not. I think it's pretty much the same across the board. These people clearly think differently though. Just wait till you see what happens when she actually finds the note. So I get up and I found this note. This note pretty much told me that Ron gets with fat chicks. So out of everything on the note, that's the first thing that comes to your- That's your first complaint. That's the worst thing that he did. Are you kidding me? You call yourself sweetheart? Just tell me if this is true. I'm like shaking. I'm like shaking right now. I did not know that Ron hooked up with fat chicks. I thought it was- I thought he just put his face between some woman's breasts. I need a friend. My girls aren't here. Did this really happen? No, I definitely didn't see that. I can already tell this note thing is it's gonna go well. This is gonna work out. Now this plan is genius because they pull everyone into it who's not even involved and just make it way more dramatic than it needs to be. What might possibly have been resolved more calmly in a private matter will now turn into a giant convoluted chaotic mess with no conclusion. The monologue from the beginning of the Twilight Zone could definitely apply to this show as well. There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. Found that in my drawer just now. Right away, I know it's either Schnooky or Jenny. But then I read the letter and I see the word wisely, and I know Schnooky doesn't use that kind of vocabulary. I like how he doesn't really even say that as an insult. It sounds like he's just being honest. Also, as you can see, he immediately knew who wrote the note. It was no secret at all. I shouldn't have did that right before bed. I, I call say. a mean adrenaline rush. Me too. Did you hear the drawer open? Yeah, I'm I was like, like duh, 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 duh. And these two are over here talking about literally having an adrenaline rush from placing a note in a drawer. Obviously, someone in the house had to have put it there. And unless you guys are amazing actors, I don't think you're going to pull this off. I don't know what the hell. Did you think you were being, like, crafty? Look at me. We're going to talk right now. Yes, I was dancing with girls. Yes, I took shots between some waitresses' breasts. All right, I'll be honest. Yes, I did these things, but hear me out. I would have told you if I knew that a note was going to tell you anyway. How am I supposed to predict the future? I didn't know this was going to happen. Was not holding hands with no girl at clutch. <clears throat> got her number, threw it away. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. No, Sam, don't go anywhere. Listen, I got the girl's number, yes, but I lost it. And even if I hadn't lost it, I probably wasn't going to call her because I had other numbers. Look at me. Look at me. No, 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 I want to know who typed up the letter. Who got to a computer to type up a letter and print it out? Who the hell figured out how to use a computer in this house? I want to know right now. Was not holding hands with no girl. It's a hell of a statement right there. I was not holding hands with no girl. That, that means he was holding hands with a girl. Boom. Sam, I just need you to listen to me and to trust me. Look at me. I wasn't not holding no hands with no girls. And if you can't accept the truth, then I don't know what to tell you. The stuff in the letter wasn't that bad. I'm more pissed about the letter being anonymous because they think that I'm 
stupid and I'm not gonna know who it was. That's what I've been saying all along. They really did not think through this plan at all because it's just gonna end up collapsing in on them and Ronnie and Sam are gonna be fine. They always are in the end, even though they're just gonna argue again anyway. This will only make them stronger, trust me. Sit down, talk to me. I'm here in a house with you, obviously in love with you. And obviously I'm in love with you. Like. Obviously I'm in love with you. How could I even make it more obvious? I'm so in love that I hook up with other girls just to remember why I'm with you in the first place. On a second, phone, did you make I out told, with anybody? I told you on the phone. Hold on, Not from my up. recollection. I don't remember making out with anybody. No, no. Not I don't remember. Yes or no. I don't think so, no. I never understood why they try to hide stuff like this on reality TV shows because it's all being filmed. They're going to find out anyway, eventually. All you're doing is postponing it. Did you? No. You didn't make out with anybody? No. And obviously I'm in love with you. Like. To make matters worse, Ron did this right after he just caused Sam to start crying and run home. There were so many instances like this, so I'm not sure if this was the right one, but I think what happened was he called her a bitch because she wasn't having any fun. Then she ran home crying and then he did this. You asked for her number. I got her number, yes. I'm sick right now because I came home crying and you ended up in my bed. You. No, please, Sam, don't leave. I love you. This, you're the one for me at this particular moment in time. I haven't done anything. And I haven't done anything, Sam. Keep on. I gave. I gave. Keep I got a girl's number. Okay, I got a girl's number. I threw it away. I don't have the girl's number. Got a girl's number. I threw out the number. That's all that happened. Plus the thing with the breasts and the hand holding and the making out. I did a lot of stuff, okay? But I swear I would not have done it if you were there because then you would have seen it. You were with me and you- do I don't give a f Leave me alone to have a great time in Miami because we're gonna be done. Like, what do you want? I came home to you and I've been dedicated to you since that night because I made a mistake. Every day I wake up with you, every night I go to bed with you. Why does the music change here? Like they're acting as if Ron has made some sort of romantic point with all of this. This is the furthest thing from romance I can possibly imagine. Of course you wake up and go to bed with her. You guys all live in the same house. Every day since then you've been dedicated to her just because you've been sleeping and waking up next to her. That's that's it. That's all you do. And you didn't even tell her the truth about any of that and had no plans to if that note didn't happen. Every day I wake up next to you. That clearly negates any cheating I could have done. That's how that works. Every day I spend my whole day with you. Do you get that? I gave you the chance and you spit in my face, so I'm gonna go do my own thing. What? What the hell? How did he spin this around on her? You're gonna spit in my face? You're gonna get upset when I cheat on you? Fine, you don't deserve me. I gave you a chance and you blew it, you know? But sometime in the future, you should reflect on what you've done here. Anyway, I'm gonna go dig that girl's number out of the trash, but I really think you should sort out your problems because this is getting out of control. You don't just get upset when people cheat. So then Ronnie goes outside to have his post-breakup cigarette and Sam just goes back to sleep because that's those are the only two activities that they do in the house. This bitch Angelina was telling Ronnie and Sammy that you were talking about Paulie when he, cause he's drunk. I didn't follow any of that. Who's talking shit about? Wait, huh? So Angelina is talking shit about Ronnie to Sam and Polly. Is that is that what's going on? This bitch Angelina was telling Ronnie and Sammy that you were talking about Paulie when he, cause he's drunk. All right, Angelina was talking shit to Ronnie and Polly about Mike. No, Mike isn't even involved. In Angelina was telling Ronnie and Sammy that you were talking about Paulie when he, cause he's drunk. I think I got it. Angelina was talking shit to Ronnie and Sam about Polly and Jay Wow. No, about Jay Wow because Jay Wow was talking shit about Polly because Polly was drunk. I think that's the whole thing right there. Angelina said that. Angelina, what were you saying about me talking about Polly? Angelina, what were you saying about me talking shit about Polly to Ronnie and Sam when Vinny wasn't there and Snooki was at the club? I think that's bullshit and you know it. Vinny, why would you try and start trouble right now? What? Why is my conversation even being brought up though? Don't yell at me, honey. Don't. Now Sam's talking shit to JWoww in front of Polly, Vinny, Ronnie, and Angelina and Snooki. This is not good. I don't like you. Why don't you like me? Because I came to you as a woman and told you about your man. You too. Came to her as a woman? You wrote an anonymous note. You could have just walked up and told her as a friend, and then you guys probably wouldn't even be fighting right now. But no, an anonymous note, that's the way to go, because now she's back with Ronnie and she hates both of you guys. That clearly worked out very well. So then they all just start fighting each other and screaming at each other, and then the episode ends and the Twilight Zone music plays. Listening to everybody else and you're not listening to me. Oh, they're arguing again. I hang out with everyone from Long no, Island. I'm no. friends with everyone from Long Island. Jenny. You ran your mouth to my best friends. To who? I want to know their names. J420, Joey Yanks, Bill. J420 and Joey Yanks. Those are real people. And then Bill. Those. That's the three. Those are the three people right there. J420, Tommy, or Johnny Yanks, Jimmy Yanks, 
and Bill. J420, I only saw him one time. I want to be cool with everyone here. I don't even want any problems. But you can't be cool if you keep talking I'm telling you I'm not talking That little clip right there can pretty much summarize this entire show. If you keep talking I'm telling you I'm not talking You better not be talking shit. I'm not talking shit. Well, you know what? I think you're talking shit, so let's fight. Who is the truck driver bringing home skanks like you? Oh, you and your dirty grenades. Just I'm gonna ride on Mike and Paulie's You're bandwagon. the dirtiest one. I have, honey, I'm, I know I'm the best right now. Would you be surprised to find out that these two end up hooking up this very night? Funniest thing is they both accuse each other of being trashy and hooking up with trashy people, and then they hook up with each other, so I guess they're both right. Oh, I hate him. I hate Vinny. I hate him. I can't stand Vinny. I hate him so much that I think I might actually just hook up with him tonight. All right, it is club time, everyone. It is time to go to the clubs until four or five in the morning and then go home and argue. I actually got sick of the bathroom and it was over like a mixture of things between the wine, champagne, vodka, and like the food. Bring me back to the room. So Jenny gets sick, apparently not because she's too drunk, but because of the combination of drinks and the food. So she obviously wants to leave, but for some reason she runs over to Mike and demands that he take her home, even though he's with someone, and doesn't even explain why. I told Mike, you know, I was like begging him. I was like, please, I just got sick. I need your help. Is that really what happened? Are you acting like you walked over there and politely asked him and said, please, will you take me home, Mike? I got sick. That That's how it went down? No, you ran over there, demanded that he take you home, and then when he said no, you started threatening people. I was like, I'm not leaving right now. I'm, I'm with this girl right here. Jenny, she's like, I'm about to fight the girl that you're with right now. I'm just like, what? You, are you serious right now? To be clear, no matter how she asked Mike, there was no chance in hell that he's leaving the club. And I'm pretty sure they weren't the only two there, so I'm not exactly sure why she singled out Mike. But if you'll notice, again, we have a situation that could have resolved very simply that is being blown up into something far more complicated. It's actually pretty amazing. I would like to see a psychologist talk about this show. In fact, when this show is at its peak, they actually had college courses about it, and they still might. I don't even know. You want to somebody up right now? She smacks me in the back of the head. So when he says no, she decides to smack him in the back of the head and refer to him as Michael, as if she's his mother or something. I just don't understand why you need him to go with you when there's other people you could have asked. So she gets kicked out of the club for smacking him in the head, and then somehow that's his fault too. Just want to point out really quick that literally everyone on this show does stupid shit constantly, and I just didn't happen to talk about all of them. I'm not trying to single anyone out. Like, Mike is not in the right most of the time. So when he comes in here, I'm punching him in the face. Who brought you home? Myself! Can you believe that I got kicked out of the club for slapping someone in the head? W w what the hell? Well, you know what? When he gets here, I'm gonna smack him in the head again, and hopefully he'll learn his lesson about getting smacked in the head. That's exactly what happens. She smacks him in the head again. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this glimpse into the reality TV of the past. It, it is now time to return to the present. I don't think there will ever be another show that's quite as trashy as this. I've seen a lot of reality TV shows, and this is probably still on top when it comes to that. Anyway, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I might do another one like this in the future, depending on how much people like this one. I'm sure people that are familiar with the show are going to be like, Hey, why didn't you talk about this shit? Why didn't you talk about this one? Maybe, okay? Like, you're not right. getting- are you getting it? Like- I'm totally getting it.